uh, Tony Fowle here with another workshop video. This time it's about replacing the Acme style screw which drives the cross slide on the lathe. It's been replaced with a, what's called a ball screw which are more common on CNC machines. Motivation for changing is, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but there's quite a bit of backlash in that. You might be able to hear it clicking. The first thing that uh, we're going to look at is measuring the amount of backlash in this before I removed it from the lathe. And then at the end of the video, we'll have a look to see how much improvement there is from the bore screw. Right, well, let's get into it. Well, this is just uh, set up to be a quick test of the uh, backlash on the top slide. Uh, with the original Acme screw thread. Uh, you probably can't read what's on the dial gauge, but uh, you should be able to hear clunk as I move it. And that's about nearly 0.75 of a millimetre, which is totally unacceptable in my view. Uh, that's why I've got to do something about it. I'll measure the uh, ball screw in like manner when uh, that's installed. We'll see what it's like. This is the uh, cross slide. Uh, it's moved by uh, the screw here, uh, but I had an awful lot of uh, backlash in it. So I pulled the screw and the bronze nut that it, I checked the, the, the screw with some accurate vernier calipers, the width of uh, several pieces of thread, and there was minimal wear on this. But then I pulled the nut out. Uh, that's, that's just held in with uh, this single bolt and it's just a question of moving the slide to the end and unscrewing that and then I can take the nut out. Now it's pretty obvious, you probably won't be able to see it on the video, but it was pretty obvious that this was badly worn. Now probably the simplest way around it, I've got a lump of bronze and made a new nut, but for some time I've been thinking about changing this to a ball screw actuation. This recently arrived, which is a ball screw of the same length, essentially, as the original one. Well, it's just... uh, so I, I then pulled the nut out from here. And if I take this off, we can see that would normally fit underneath there, like so. The, the screw would fit in here, and as the handles wound, it would move the cross slide in and out. As you can see, the nut on the ball screw is considerably different in its mounting requirements than the bronze nut that was originally there. So, the main thrust of this video is how I went about uh, fixing this in place of the other one. Now, this is the space that the nut has to ride in. Now with the original system, the screw went in through here and the nut fitted onto the cross slide with the bolt that I illustrated before and then the nut would move in this channel and as you can see there's plenty of room for it at the bottom and on the sides. Unfortunately, because this wasn't made for this ball screw, uh, it's not quite that simple. Ball screw comes with this nut, which has got a round section here and two flats here. Now if I offer it up in here, you can probably see that the flats on this are just a little tiny bit, maybe a millimetre or so, wider than the as-cast groove in the top of the saddle. So what I'm going to do is take the top of the saddle off, put it in the milling machine and just take a very light cut down these sides to enable that to fit in. So when the milling's finished and this fits in there, I'll be able to check if I've got enough depth here for this to drop down into. If not, I don't want to machine out the bottom of this. I'll, I'll pass a, just a levelling cut across because it's the as-cast finish at the 
the moment so that'll give me the maximum without uh, destroying rigidity or strength. If this is then too high what I'll do is just grind a little bit off the top of this. The, this uh, ball nut is uh, hardened steel so I can't uh, simply file it, saw it or uh, easily machine it away so I'll have to grind a little bit off there before doing that I'll uh, uh, the tape up the uh, or everything else so that any grinding grit does not get into the uh, thread itself or the nut. So that, that's the next stage. I'll take the top of the saddle off, put it in the milling machine and then we'll come back and see how well this fits. Well here we are. I've got the uh, top of the saddle mounted on the mill. Uh, I've uh, aligned it so that it's uh, square to the table and I've centered the DRO on this hole which defines the axis of the screw that goes through the middle. Uh, that gives me the option to be able to center this over the axis of the spindle. So let's take a first cut and see how it goes. Well that's it for the first cleaning up cut. That gives me a reference to uh, take some measurements and decide how much more to machine off if I need any and uh, we'll get back to it. Well I've cleaned up uh, this slot on the mill and it's equally disposed uh, about the centre line of the screw and the nut now fits in with a little bit of clearance, probably around about a millimetre in, in total. Uh, but as you can see, the screw is lower at this end than it is here. At this end, it's being held up by the curve on the screw. Let's have a closer look. At that. So it's being held up by this rounded part here or the depth away from the center line of this. So what I've got to do here is with a cutting, grinding cutting disc is to cut approximately eight millimeters off that surface which will bring it up close to here but not breaking into uh, the cylindrical part which holds the balls for the ball screw. So that's the next job. I'll tape everything up, cover it in plastic so that uh, there's no grinding uh, debris that gets into anywhere where it shouldn't. Well I had to grind a little bit more off uh, the bottom of this than I thought in order to get it to uh, slide in here without being too high. I also had to grind a bit off the top to clear the top slide. Now the standard screw normally would fit up through here and be in this position. The nut would be fixed to the top slide. But you can see at this end there's no support for the screw itself. It's all, all done back here and with the top slide holding this nut. And that works pretty well. Now we can see on this uh, ball screw that this end has been machined to take a bearing. So I've got the option of putting a bearing on this end. Obviously I need to hold it some way. So I've got this block that I can bore a hole in to support the bearing. Now whether it's a good thing or not to support the, the bearing depends on how accurately everything's lined up. Because imagine that the bearing was off a little bit, a little high, a little low or to, to one side, then this nut is going to be bolted firmly to the top slide. It'll be putting 
excess load on this unless this bearing is lined up absolutely perfect. I'm going to try it with the bearing, align everything as closely as I can and see how smoothly it works. But I still have the option then of just simply removing the bearing on this end and letting it float, so to speak, as the original Acme screw thread was. So the trick with this now is how I bore the hole in this block to take the bearing in exactly the right place. It has to be concentric with this hole at the front which will have a spigot something like this on the mounting. If it's not concentric then the screw will be going off to one side or up or down and that will put excessive load on the mounting for the screw. So what I'm going to do is bore a recess at the end of this the machine a circular diameter on the block here which just fits into that recess. That will then, I mean if I've got this whole board, this recess board, concentric with this, then the spigot on here should be concentric with this and then I can clock that up in the forge or chuck in the lathe and bore the hole that was concentric with the outside. So then when it's all bolted together, everything should be in line. Well, that's the theory. Uh, this is live TV, folks. So um, we're going to see how I attempt to line this up and bore that register. That's the next stage. I mentioned the need to be able to mount the saddle such that I could bore a hole concentric with the hole that, mounting hole that was already there. I got lucky and found this uh, piece in the scrap box and this diameter was a perfect fit in the hole in the top of the saddle. So that's bolted down to act as a spigot. So what I'm doing here, I've got a center finder I'm going to set this to be true with the axis of the spindle. This, there are many, uh, any conventional uh, center finding methods would, would do to find the center of this spigot. But in case you haven't seen uh, these, are, they're quite uh, useful and very quick to use. You've got a dial gauge here and uh, some form of stylus which touches the work. As I move this you, you can see that the reading on the dial changes. So if this is spun around, if this isn't true then we'll see the needle wavering. With these you, you can get uh, different types of uh, uh, styli. For instance this one with the, the, the bending would normally be done for centering on an internal hole and there's several different sizes of those for different size holes. There, there are straight ones available of uh, different lengths for different uh, offsets and different distances. Very useful and quick way for uh, aligning on a hole or um, a, a, a spigot. There's even a special uh, stylus here which you would put onto uh, a center punch mark. Let's just see how this uh, works. This bar here is to stop the main assembly rotating, but you can see that the working end of it is rotating around. I'll put some oil onto here uh, so that it uh, doesn't uh, stick. Now I'll just put uh, that out a little bit by moving the, the Y axis. And you can see on here that the needle's wavering quite a bit. So I'll just bring that into line. Perfect. So now I know that the mill table in the X and Y direction is aligned with the axis of the mill. So the next stage is to mount the top of the saddle on this spigot 
and hold it square. Okay, well I've now got the top of the, the saddle uh, fitted onto the spigot, which uh, we saw before has been centered and the table has not been uh, moved since that was done. That locates the bottom of this concentrically uh, but because of the length of this there's a little bit of sideways movement so we could have some misalignment there and also fore and aft it can move a little bit that way. So I need to ensure that it's aligned in those two directions. The top slide runs on these two dovetail. That's difficult to uh, get a reference off because the, the edges here um, have probably been knocked a little bit over the years of uh, use and the best way to measure where you are with a dovetail is with a precision ground rod like this one. So if I put that in there and then use this square, which I know to be fairly accurate, then I can set that to make sure that it's aligned this way. These two surfaces are the other important ones that need to be aligned in this direction. Well, that'll be clamped to the square and that will force those to be upright. So that will go on this side and I've got another square here, which I'll clamp on. So then, this should be located accurately and rigidly enough. Okay, well everything's been clamped up now and checked for squareness in all directions um, several times because it's important that I get this right. Made up a boring tool. Let's take the first cut and see how it goes. I'm watching the DRO for depth. Going down five millimeters. Both three and a half now. Cut. It's cleaned up uh, pretty much all round, but I need to increase the diameter, which will be 46 millimeters on there, and then take it out and see how it lines up. Well, I've now finished boring the locating recess here. In addition to that, while it was mounted in this position, such that it was square to this. I just took a very light cleaning up cut off this surface so that the block has got a flat and true surface to bolt to. The next stage will be to drill and tap a couple of mounting holes in here uh, and then matching ones in this block so that it can be held in place. Well, I've finished machining the rear bearing block which will fit in the uh, back end of the saddle. That's to take a, a bearing for the far end of the ball screw. Let's take it out and see if it fits. That's just a backing piece to keep that uh, away from the back but to keep it parallel. Well the, the top slides out this way as far as it will go. I know you don't have a great view of it. Um, but I'll fit this on and see how it goes. Yep, that's a perfect fit. So all I need to do now is drill two holes for the mounting bolts. Uh, drilling the holes in the rear uh, bearing block for mounting. Well, this is part way through machining the uh, replacement piece that takes the place of this with the uh, current acne screw thread. Well, besides the uh, bearing carrier at the back, uh, these are some of the other pieces I had to make. Uh, this, this piece is the um, uh, main bearing block which has two back-to-back -back angular contact bearing preloaded. That supports the front part of the ball screw. This, this piece goes in here and it applies uh, some pressure onto the outer race of the bearings to keep the preload on and to uh, keep the bearings in place. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on the video but uh, the, there's a very small clearance in here to ensure that when, when this is tightened up there are four screws that go in here uh, that, that apply some preload onto the bearing but there's a stop 
in there so it can't that, that's that's preset uh, so it's not just totally on the uh, torque of those screws finally this piece goes on here and uh, it, it's just simply um, a, a handle to wind the screw in and out now I use a, a, a DRO on the lathe so there's no need for me to scribe measurement marks on the rim of this so I'll just leave that blank it's fine I'll probably um, make a, a, a prettier handle at some time and then there was one other piece I had to make uh, we've seen that I had to uh, cut down the ball nut in order to fit in the, uh, the the channel in the top of the saddle now to mount that onto the cross slide I've got this uh, cast iron block that I made it's only in cast iron because I just had that piece of material uh, the, this has been machined on the sides and bottom for the same reason that the nut was for clearance in the slot now I've yet to machine off the, the top part what I'll do I'll assemble everything and measure up and see how much I need to mill down on this it will leave a, a, a nice flat on there for mounting I'll drill down on this and then when the cross slide is on top of that the mounting hole I'll be able to mark down through here so I'll know where to drill and tap this to bolt this in exactly the right place relative to the top slide that's the plan this is the uh, ball screw nut and this is the block which holds it in and with careful measurement of the height under here and this block I've carefully machined that so it's an absolute perfect sliding fit under here this will then get bolted to this piece and I've checked throughout the range of movement that there's no deviation in the height between it it's a perfect uh, sliding fit uh, all, all the way across so the remaining job now is just to drill and tap this block so that it can be bolted to this slide so with this in the appropriate place I've used transfer punch and uh, that will mark on the uh, block so I'll be able to drill and tap it when that's done I'll have to take it apart again hopefully for the last time drill and tap this and then reassemble again hopefully for the last time uh, when I've done that we'll come back and have a look and see how it all works see how it feels well I've now got the hole drilled and tapped in the uh, block which holds the nut the, the, the ball screw and the nut have been well greased the slides have been oiled so I'm ready to get it assembled okay well it's uh, all assembled that's a very smooth action. I am pleased with that. It's about as far as it uh, goes. Yes, that's really nice. Okay, let's see how much backlash we've got. Well, I've now got the tool post on and a gauge set up in just the same manner that I tested it when uh, I first started this video. So I'll push and pull in the same manner and see what happens. Pushing much harder than I did with the other one. There we are, 0.01 of a millimetre movement. I'm pretty happy with that. And the, the action is very, very smooth as well. Was it worth the time? I don't know, probably. It's a few months now since I first made the video for the change of the screw for the cross slide and I've had quite a bit of use out of it so far with varying types of things interrupted cuts smooth cuts and so I've had a good chance to um, uh, evaluate whether it was time well spent or not well in a nutshell yes it was time well spent the action is just so smooth 
but there's no noticeable backlash. If I put my thumb here, which is quite a sensitive way of feeling any movement in this, and I just make the smallest movement on the handle, it transfers to movement on here. The pitch of the ball screw is greater than the pitch of the original Acme thread. The, the pitch on that is approximately three millimeters, where it's five millimeters on the ball screw. So the actual movement is coarser with the ball screw. So one would think it would be harder to make a precise movement on the saddle for changing the diameter of the workpiece. In fact, the opposite is the case. Because of the smooth and precise nature of it, it's very, very easy looking at the DRO to set it to the resolution of the DRO with no problem. It's just so much more precise than it was with the other screw. I'm really pleased with it. There's one final thing. Did anybody notice the deliberate mistake? If so, write up about it in the comments. If you uh, like this uh, video or any of the others, uh, please share, uh, subscribe to uh, my channel and don't forget to click the uh, button to receive updates uh, of any other videos. Thanks for watching.